just slides right in. I, Hi. I thought it was going to be like a long break. I, oh, I didn't know. Where are you going? Oh, we were chilling. Chill. Let's all chill. <laughs> I was just saying how it, it, Sundays, from my end, suck at Fanboy because I've partied and entertained all weekend long. Like, usually I fly in on a Friday after I work all week. I fly in Friday, and it's, party, look at me, let's have fun, everybody's having a good time, yeah, then I go to sleep, then I wake up at the butt crack of dawn Saturday morning, all day do that, and then Saturday is the big party. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I, I don't know where you went last night. You disappeared. Well, I, I had my big party on Friday night. You know? I don't know why. Friday's Shabbos. <laughs> <laughs> no, but last night, yeah, man, I just uh, I just chilled out. I put everything into the day yesterday. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It was awesome. I love being here, man. This is like, I have, I've, uh, this is my favorite festival so far. People here are yeah, awesome. Yeah, great. Yeah, you should come right here. I bet he says that to all the yeah. Yeah. No, really, right? man. I've, I've done, a, I've done yeah. a bunch of you, and it's like, uh, yeah, this is awesome. Yeah. I like your town very much. And the people here are really cool. Everybody I talk to. Awesome. Uh, for those that don't know, uh, he actually got his start on stage. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about, like, you yeah. know, the experience? And, I mean, like, did you just sure. move to New York just on a whim? No, no. I was like, I grew up in, the, I grew up. I grew up uh, watching a lot of a lot of movies with my grandfather, you know, and Humphrey Bogart movies and all these movies, and um, you know, I came up on that. And when I was like, you know, eight, ten years old, I really wanted to do that. I wanted to be in that world and do that for a living. So um, <clears throat> my mom took me to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts when I was twelve and enrolled me. We grew up about twenty minutes from New York City, in New Jersey, to save New Jersey. And uh, so I started studying with these people, but it, it wasn't kids acting school. It, it was for children. It was on Saturdays, but my teachers there were really serious, working professional people and teachers from like who went to Russia to study. Uh, like, ha has anyone ever heard of the group theater or, or any of these people? Like back in the back in the 40s and 30s, there was a group of people called the group theater, and one of them was uh, Lee Strasberg. Mm. Uh, Stella Adler, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, all these, uh, Sandy Meisner, and um, Bobby Lewis, and they went to Russia to study with Stanislavski, who was uh, the, the king of the world as far as theater went, and, uh, and then they came back and they formed a company called the Group Theater, and it, it was in New York City, and, you know, it was a theater for the people, it was, um, they did a play called Waiting for Lefty during a taxi strike. And everyone in it was on Broadway during, in the Belasco Theater. And uh, at the end of the play, it comes out, they just found Lefty Costello with a bullet in his head. We got a strike. And the whole audience got up and strike, 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 and went out into the street. I mean, it was big time stuff. It was really serious theater back then. So I studied with these people, man, when I was like 12 years old. I studied, my teachers were, were these people. and. Uh, it's pretty amazing. And then after that, I went to Lee Strasberg School, and then I went to Stella Adler School when I was like 16. And I met Stella, and she took a liking to me. And she said, uh, why don't you come to my class, my real class, and you don't have, you can't say anything. You just gotta be real quiet, and you gotta sit there, and then afterward, you come and talk to me. So I used to do that, you know? And she used to come out fully made up, like she was going on stage, you know? and and. Real ground down woman, but tough. She was Marlon Brando's teacher, Monty Cliff. And, uh, you know, she would sit in a throne and <laughs> teach her class of, of really serious people, like famous actors, you know. And, uh, and it was awesome. And then I would go, you know, when she was taking off her makeup and, and talk to her. And she would, uh, I, would, I was able to ask her questions and, and, and stuff. And that, that was, you know, pretty amazing. She said to me, never lay your head on the pillow unless you've changed the world that day. Well, I was like 16 and I thought, well, all right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, so I try, to, I try to do that no matter what. You know, I don't know. Move a donut. <laughs> you know, whatever. But it really, really meant a lot to me. And then uh, I, I uh, 
I graduated high school and I, I, my folks wanted me to go to college. So I, I enrolled in Mason Grove School of the Arts in Rutgers grade school. Bill Esper ran it. And uh, Catherine Gately was my teacher. Lloyd Williamson. Uh, it was a real conservatory. So uh, my acting teacher was Catherine Gately and my movement teacher was Lloyd Williamson and then Andy Mendelson was my voice teacher. And then after a year, I moved to, I quit college and I moved to New York City. And I studied with all those people because they had studios in New York City and I just started doing theater. And I did one play after another, man, for like, for like 25 years. <laughs> you know, I just did one play after another. And mainly, I did new plays. So, you know, Angels in America, anybody here, have you heard that? Like, I originated that. I did the original show. We, I've worked on that for like a year and a half. So we did, we did a show, we opened it, premiered it, like in San Francisco, you know? did that, and a lot of brand new plays. And uh, in the theater community in New York, man, there's like thousands and thousands of people in it, but it's very small, it's a very small community. And uh, it's beautiful, man, I miss it a lot. And this show, Sons of Anarchy, really reminds me a lot of that, that energy of, you know, we're, we're doing something brand new, and we're shooting it brand new, and the, the quality of the writing, you know? and the people and the actors and the crew. We're working with the same crew we started with seven years ago, which is insanely rare. So it's a gigantic family of goodness. But it, it does remind, Kurt's, Kurt Sutter, the creator of the show, he's from the theater, you know? And a lot of the actors, are, you know, dig that. Charlie's from London, you know? And so it's like got that, it's got that freshness to it. Something about this, do you guys go to the theater? Yes. Yeah, right? There's nothing like it. It's like rock and roll, right? <laughs> it's pretty live, right? It's like here and now. Right there. We're all in the same room doing this thing. Yeah, something to that. Yeah. What's it like working on the, the final season? I mean, being going through the entire ride of Sun. I mean, it's a. What well, first episode I saw, I'm sure you all feel the same. I, I was like, this is the most amazing show ever. Yeah. yeah. And now it's coming to an end. And it's like, well, yeah. But yeah. I feel like you're just getting started. There's so much more to do. What, what, I mean. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, it, it, yeah, it's coming to an end. And, you know, everybody said, and, and it's like, you know, if to, to be involved in shooting even one scene in Sons of Anarchy is a big deal, right? But to be involved in shooting, you know, the last season of seven seasons yes. and, 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 and following the story to an end is, is quite an experience, man. Mm -hmm. It's deep. It's extraordinary, man. It's extraordinary. And, and uh, you know, in the back of our heads, we're, you know, it's, the end, it's ending, it's ending, it's ending. But like, you know, you know, we're showing up every day like like it's we're here, man. We're here and now and you feel it. It's tangible. Very tangible. You're in for something else, man. <laughs> yeah, how was it work with um Rap Pullman and uh Katie Sugal? Yeah, well they're they're beautiful people, you know, and and very, very funny yeah. people, right? So uh and very serious people. So, you know, it's it's um it's it's always enjoyable. You say, oh my god, you head boy, you are Peggy Bundy. Yeah, you say, oh yeah. my god, look at that. <laughs> yeah. Can you head boy something? Can and a lot of a lot of other stuff. I mean like yeah. you know, I mean uh, you know, Ron comes from the theater yeah. for years, been a working actor for forever and ever. Katie yeah. too. She used to back up Bette Midler, Bob Dylan. Yeah. I mean, you know, when she was just a kid. You know that? Do you guys know that? She sings? Oh, oh yeah, please. Wow, I didn't know that. You should look on her, look on iTunes. Yeah, please. She was, uh, she was dating um, Jane Simmons, too. Jane Simmons? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's <laughs> I find out. Well, like, yeah. You know, I mean, Jane Simmons dated everybody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a lot of her music is on, on Suns, actually. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. A lot. Oh, wow. Yeah, she does a lot of soundtrack on, on cool. Suns. And she has a few records of her own. She just yeah. put one out a few months ago. She's a few. She, you know, they're, they're very complicated, very complex, very funny, and very yeah. serious. Like, Casey Gosh will be in the, in the Hollywood Hall of Fame, too. Yeah, she just got a star, man. Yeah, and I, how about that? Yeah. Pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Pretty cool. Now, for the character of Chucky, when you first read about him, like, 
Two part question. <laughs> First read about the character, and then how did you get into that character? Like, did, <laughs> did you prepare? I, I mean, he's one of my favorites. You, uh, his, your character is. Thanks. I mean, Con, yeah. when it happened, I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> But like, man, you know, <laughs> reading that, reading that was just like, look, man, it's 2014, you know, it's like, you know, we, we, we have come a long way. There's been a lot of uh, art, there's been a lot of stuff written, been a lot of films, been a lot of books, a lot of things, a lot of stories been told, man. And I have never, never. in my life <laughs> seen a character like that ever, anywhere, you know, and I thought like, holy Shit! It's <laughs> an original concept. That is it, Kurt. An original concept, man. And and hey, man, there's nothing more spectacular, more important, more exciting, you know, to an actor than an original concept. You know, a person who you just go like, wow, that guy. What? the hell is that? And then <laughs> and cracked me up. It made me laugh so hard. And, uh, you know, and then I really, I really saw the, the guy in there. You know, what's it like for this guy in, in the world? You know, what is it like for him? What is the deal? And I did all this homework, you know, and I made, I made a, a person, you know, so that when I showed up, the first, I'm pretty sure the first shot that we did was when I get into the van with, with sit, sit between like Charlie and Ron. And I say, oh, th thanks, guys. And I shake their hand, and then I put my hand out my pants. And I just, you know, just as if I'm not doing it. You know, you know pay no mind to them looking at me. Pay no mind, you know, because the guy just does that. It's like as if I'd be doing it right now, talking to you. You know, he just has no awareness that that that's happening. His hand is independent, you know, <laughs> and it's just doing that. But he doesn't. You know, it's just I happening. Had, I had to stop and rewind it because I was like, "Is he doing what I think he's doing?" Yeah. <laughs> it like goes to the back of your brain. You know, it just goes to the back. You're like, "No, no, he ain't doing that." He's not yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my God, he's doing it. <laughs> And you remember, oh, it's FX, of course. Yeah, <laughs> FX. Mm, mm. <laughs> yeah. Cut, cut Look it. at FX, man. Um, you know, that's that's something. Are you guys watching this channel? What's yeah. happening yeah. on this channel? Yes. God. Wow. Right? <laughs> pretty historic, pretty different, right? Totally. Taking taking people to very different, very lush places. It's pretty cool. Man. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Now, I consider myself a, a fan of the show. I enjoy thoroughly watching the show, but it wasn't until the, this last episode, and I don't know why I never caught it, why I never knew. I'm just saying this out. I'm probably embarrassing myself now, but I had no idea that Kurt Sutter was Otto for some what? reason. I yeah, had no you didn't idea. know that? Didn't yeah. have because he was so in character in Otto, I, I didn't even I didn't even catch it. Yeah. And I was like. Well, he really screwed himself over, too. <laughs> <laughs> what about that, that's, man? That's not that you should see his character on The Shield. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah he, oh. he, when he was a staff writer on The Shield, he played a uh, Vigo, this East European crime lord guy who's just scary as all F. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. I'm check that out. I met Kurt in an acting class. He's a hell of an actor. He's an extremely is. good actor, deep actor. And, and yeah, man, he... Not only did he create the show and writes every show and directs shows, he he gave himself that hurdle to uh, to go to go in the show in that character, which is also really, you know, I I was talking about the you know Chucky being a, an original idea, like the whole everything on this show is an original idea. I've never mm -hmm. seen a character like Otto on TV, mm -hmm. a guy doing that, that journey, or really any, any of these characters, you know, like every single person on that show is a very specific, very independent uh, character that I don't think anyone has ever seen before, and I think like people identify so deeply with this show because they, they see themselves, they see people up there, they don't see, uh, 
you know, m massive movie stars playing a role. They see people, and because the, the characters are so well written, the story is so interesting, the actors are so committed, and so, so with it, so deep. And that's not to ask, I see a lot of that too, is the casting. Wendy <laughs> O'Brien, man, yeah, Wendy O'Brien cast this. And, and yeah, I mean, what a, what a genius move every single one of these actors was to, to fill a show with that. Very courageous, too, man. Yeah. And, um, yeah. I mean, that's what everyone always says. You know, why, uh, why don't people do more of that? Yeah. You know, use, use yeah. actors as opposed Re regular to... Regular looking actors. Yeah. <laughs> as, as opposed to, like, let's find this person. You know, mm -hmm. the name, 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 name. But look what happens when you do, and you're totally committed to it. Amazing things happen. Amazing things happen. Just a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of courage. So that's for very courageous to do that. And wow, did it pay off, you know. Question back down the back. I was wondering who's your favorite female character and who's your favorite male character? And which character do you think has the most compassion for Chucky's problems? <laughs> well, T, you know, found me. You know, I mean, basically, uh, well, he didn't find me. You know, Tig, um, when, I, when they, took me out when Lynn took me back. First off, my my character, um, like, I, I didn't know they were going to bring me back for season two. And when they did, and Lynn brings me out, you know, Tig says, uh, hey, we'll take him. You know, we'll take So if I, if he didn't do that, I'd be dead. Chuck would be dead, you know? So he, he saved my life. And they gave me a home. And, you know, if they didn't do that, you know, he would have been... God knows where, like a dog, you know? It's like a dog getting adopted by, by you know, out of a shelter, you know? It's really how he did it. And then he sort of treated me like a dog. <laughs> like, he picked me up at one point. Like, you know, it's awesome how yeah. that happened. But they tell us Tig's character was like that, you know? He yeah. had that old dog that he had let him in work. Like, I love her too, man. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, Tig yeah. sometimes is, does the most vicious, like, brutal stuff to people, but then the magic of this show for me is always, you get so attached to these characters, like, I, mean, I would love to roll with these guys. Mm -hmm. Then about every fourth episode, they do something really bad that's like, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like horrible. It's like, oh, yes, that's right. These are bad people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but so com so deep and compassionate. You know, they're written so with such level to them, like, like Ryan's character, like Opie. You know, I mean, that, what a sympathetic, beautiful, compassionate mm -hmm. character. You know, to be, be in this world, be on that show, and you know, it's pretty hip. But I don't know, man, like a favorite. Like, I like everyone, every character. I, I identify with every, every single one of these characters for totally different reasons. How, how about you? Let me turn to Uh, I like Chibs probably, like the best of, of Sam Pro. And yeah. Female, uh, probably Tara. Yeah. Cool. I bet everyone, yeah. Yeah, you know when when the um, I saw it like last I don't know um, that dude um, he shot the, the when the black guy mm -hmm. and then you know he got the chain and he dragged the the guy in the wheelchair all, all right there and how they did that yeah you remember the partner not sure well, how they strapped in okay he was like strapped into his to his chair oh wow and they were able you know and they they pulled him. Oh, know, wow. Like but he was, yeah, he was like part of the chair at that Oh, point. wow. That's, so that's that was that just that. crazy. I know. Yeah. I said that. <laughs> so how they did that? And plus, when they shot the, uh, that guy, too. Yeah. It's, uh, on the knee, too. Yeah. Right I mean, he was painful. Yeah. That, My that God. hurts. Kneecap. Yeah, kneecap. Yeah. That's a lesson. Yeah. Right there. That's a warning. Yeah, that would happen if you heavy. mess around with him. Yeah. He got shot. We got time for one more question. Cool. One more. Um, of all the deaths on the show, which one do you think was, was probably the most uh, uh, traumatic or, or, you know, to say goodbye to that particular person? Well, I mean, when, when Opie, <coughs> when we lost Opie, yeah, that, was, that was pretty, pretty heavy, you know, to, 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 go, to go through that in a way, the way that that happened, an extremely emotional thing, you know, to lose to, you know, to lose a, a, a brother like that, to lose somebody, you know, on that on that level, and and like, and again, man, courage, you know, to that.
that that Kurt knew. Okay, here that we're gonna hit this note, and that's gonna happen right there. Bam! And this is the way it's gonna happen in this moment. Bing! That's how I see, I see it. It's like music almost, and that note just set the story in a you know in a direction and just opened up like you know some level of uh of story that that really you know uh, sent a show into a whole different place you know in a whole different way you know the way people feel about each other in this world and and the consequences and you know and then opie's entire history leading up to that his relationship with Jacks and, and and with the rest of the club and the, and the whole and the whole thing. Well, he that just gave was. everything to Sam <coughs> Crow. Huh? Literally, he gave everything to Sam Crow. He gave up his life, and his wife, and then himself. Mm -hmm. Jacks couldn't handle it. That, of course, led to the spiral, which brought us to this point. Well, it's the thing, man. I mean, everybody on the show gives everything to Sam Crow, including Chuck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Every nothing I wouldn't do. Not my whole life geared toward. What can I do? Well, how can I change the world today? You know? Mm -hmm. In this world, how can I help? How can I be of service? You know? And I sort of think the whole thing, and I think that, that commitment, I think people really love being around that kind of commitment. You know, watching that and seeing that, we do. That's awesome. We're going to keep paying attention to Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise. Thank you. It's run and just started last week, so so hit it. You're you're in for a beautiful ride. And watch if you haven't seen it yet. Check out from day one and watch it. You're, it's beautiful. Nice to be here. Thank you. Thank you.